Hello everyone and welcome to episode 55 of the WMA5 series here on the channel as we are Pride FC in the year 2006. We are now officially one year into this series. We started this back in March 2nd, 2020 of last year as we uh, will we'll almost be officially at one year as uh, we'll be releasing this on day 364 as uh, here on March 1st. I can't believe it. It's been a year. What a wild year it's been. Definitely the, the craziest year of uh, any type of modern history, which is with COVID-19 and whatnot. But did not think going into this series that it was going to take quite the turn it did. But we are now, you know, we've booked six years of uh, fights, I think, as far as total amount of shows. Probably close to, I would say, just under 100. I'd say under 100 for sure. Made, because we can do about 12 a year right now we're six in so we know we're uh we're getting there though we are really rocking and rolling this is really a, a big pivotal point as we got the bushido and osaka 2 card but after this card we have the heavyweight grand prix 32 fighters the biggest grand prix we've ever done it's gonna take place on the uh the basically all the absolution fights as uh or the, the absolution fight cards as uh, before we do Bushido and Saka 2, we got the mail to go through as uh, 18 beats the mail. Master Isuda, we signed him back. Uh, he is still going to be a part of Rings. Glyson Tebow left Groove Sport. Uh, Kira Kikuchi left Abiyani Combat Club. We extended, obviously, Gilbert Melendez, Ronald Sabral. We signed Alberto Crane. Alberto Crane, for, it was a part of WEC. He's 9-1, and one, 30 years old, though. Pretty old for being 9-1, and one, as far as records go. But they had like five local fights. Then he uh, had five, well, we had three KOTC fights and then two WEC fights. He beat Melvin Bullitt and then he lost to Ernst Franca. But uh, for him to be, obviously, this lightweight division is growing ever, you know, more and more and more. We're just trying to get as many names as we can to really beef up that division. As uh, Kazushi Sakuraba has left Takata Dojo. I cannot believe it. After uh, losing to Benji Radish, he's feeling like a change of scenery might be what he needs. As uh, we extended Hector Lumbar, Keith Jardines left the Minnesota Martial Arts Academy. As Akira Kikuchi joined the Takata Dojo and uh, Keith Jardine joined the pit. Uh, we extended Ronaldo Souza. We extended Joe Rogan. We signed Gray Maynard. That's an awesome. I love Gray Maynard. I always thought he was awesome. Uh, another, you know, lightweight guy. We have three, I think three, might even be four lightweights. Who have had, uh, who have been signed, but have never had a fight, and I think we have them. I think you saw it right there, with uh, when we click on. Yeah, he's going to take on Cole Miller, the American Shoot Eleven. That's going to be two prelim uh, lightweight fights on that card, the American Shoot Eleven card, where four fighters are going to make their debut. As uh, we signed Pat Healy, Pat uh, Bam Bam Healy is fourteen and one, another lightweight, twenty two years old though, twenty two being having a fourteen and one record, it's nuts. He's taking on a lot of guys. Uh, you know, he's lost to Glyson T. Bell back at, uh, in November of 2002 at Cage Warriors. Uh, he's beaten Mac Danzig. He's Michael, Michael Sanjun Kuk at, uh, WEC. Uh, he's had one great fight. Oh, no, two great fights. But one was the local fighters. I can't really count that. So he's had one great fight. A couple of good ones. A couple of decent, a couple of average. I think he's due. Just fine here in the lightweight division of Pride FC. He's still got a WC fight to do, so we'll wait for him to get done with that. As Pedro Hizzo extended his deal, and Stefan Bonner joined the American Kickboxing Academy, and we signed him. He's been in rings for a hot ass minute, as you saw when we kind of overviewed everything. He's on a two fight win streak. Uh, I just feel like a 10 and 6. I think he deserves to be here, and uh, we'll just kind of see. If he could sink or swim here in Pride FC, I think he's doing a great job. I mean, he's been a part of rings since 2003. So three years of being a part of uh, rings. I think it's time that he gets the call up that he, I think he deserves. But we shall see. Because obviously, it'd be fun to do him and Forrest Griffin. I mean, that's it's a given. Uh, that I think we'll probably have that be his first fight. Just depending on how the, uh, really the, the betting odds go. If it's going to not be such a close fight, we might not do it, but. That's just kind of what we're thinking, what's going on uh, as far as the Bushido and Osaka 2 card, though. We have a welterweight title fight. Dan Solomon taking on Tetsuji Kato. Co-main event of Vandalay Silva and Vitor Belfort. That's a huge fight there in the, in the middleweight division and much more that we'll go into. 
as uh, we have the overview. And then we have Superman Del Soma taking on Tetsuji Kato. This is going to be Tetsuji Kato's uh, first defense of the Pride of Alterweight title. They fought once before back at Final Conflict, where Del Zalman won by unanimous decision. Both fighters uh, main eventing uh, for Pride the second time now. Tetsuji Kato submitted three of his last five opponents. Both fighters are world-ranked middleweights, which is just nuts, as uh, Tetsuji Kato's second. Dennis Hallman fifth, as obviously they're welterweights, so it's just kind of weird how that happens. But Dennis Hallman will enjoy a significant weight advantage, and he's got 7-0 on the Blurcat stat picks. But here's the thing about Tetsuji Kato. You cannot count that man out if you have him down on the ground and his back is to the mat. Watch out for a fucking armbar, as it could be over in an instance as the x murder Vanley Silva taking on Vitor Belfort. They fought once before the co-main event of UFC Brazil 1998, as uh, Vitor Belfort won by TKO. Now, the long-awaited rematch, as uh, we have two of the best pound farm fighters in the world, Vitor Belfort ranked 8th, Vanley at 13th. Obviously, these two men are very, very different compared to what happened in 1998. Uh, Vanley Silva, I mean, was on a middleweight title run that I felt like was going to go on forever. But, was stopped in his tracks. Vitor Belfort has kind of had his ups and downs as far as in Pride FC, 7-5 and five in Pride as a whole. Uh, he is 13-6. and six. He's on a three-fight win streak. He's beaten Guy Metzger, Andre Semenov, and uh, Merleo Ninja Hula. He hasn't had a bad fight since June of 2003. Even then, that wasn't even a bad fight. That was decent. He's had decent to good to great fights. So, he's been somebody that, I mean, he's lost to big names. You know, he's lost to Ensign Inoue, he's lost to Dan Henderson, Nate Marcotte, and Jimmy Horn. But, I think him beating Merleo Ninja Hua to, to start off uh, before we, you know, he gets this Vanley fight. I think that was a huge win for him. Knocked him out in a minute. Uh, he's been just going on a war path, it seems. So, uh, this is going to be an exciting, exciting fight to see. As uh, Vanley Silva, though, has not won since August of 2003. As Vanley being 18-5, and five, he's 10-3, and three, so the record doesn't seem bad. He just lost to Chuck Liddell for the belt. He had a rematch with Dan Anderson, got knocked out in 40 seconds. Then he lost to a near decision to uh, Big Nog as they did the kind of the dream fight between him and, and Big Nog at Shockwave uh, to end out the year in 2005. You see there, he has had uh, eight fights. Well, his last eight fights have all been for the title, as obviously being the middleweight champion and going on this path, he's just been... Uh, a huge part of what we've done here in Pride FC the past six years that we've been booking. And I hope, I honestly, either way, whoever wins this, I think that's going to be huge for their stock. But I am really hoping for a Vanley Silva win. I, I, it would suck to see him lose four straight. As uh, Vanley has the Blurgrass staff picks 5-2, to two, but Sam S. and Chris backing Vitor Belfort. As Rodrigo Hoos taking on Rich Ace Franklin. Uh, Rodrigo is 21st in the middleweight division, and Rich Franklin is 22nd. First time they have fought, Franklin's going to enjoy a significant weight advantage. 4-3, to three, a close one. Maybe too close to call, as uh, Rodrigo Hoos has the slight advantage over Rich Franklin, according to the Blurcat staff. As uh, the Croatian sensation, Pat Milicic, taking on George Rush and St. Pierre, as uh, both world-ranked middleweights again. Uh, just what the weights being world ranked middleweights. It's kind of funny. As St. Pierre is 18th, Meltich 19th. First time they have fought. Betting lines are going to have George St. Pierre as a big favorite to win this. Yeah, I mean, I lost all respect for Pat Meltich after he stormed the U.S. Capitol. He could suck a fat baby stick at this point. As Mazagatsu Funaki taking on Sugar Rashad Evans. As uh, Rashad Evans making his Pride of Sea debut, taking on Mazagatsu Funaki, who has not won since January of 2003. Mazagatsu Funaki, obviously a legend in the pro wrestling world. And in the Pride of Sea world for what he did for Pan... Well, not the Pride of Sea world, in the mixed martial arts world, what he did for Pan Grace. But he has had a tough go of it. He took on Chuck Liddell at Tone Elimination for the, in the, uh, the middleweight Grand Prix. Took on uh, Rich Franklin, lost. Uh, lost to Jeremy Horn, and he lost to Benji Radish. So that's four big names that he's lost to. Uh, it's kind of weird because you see, uh, kind of, he you know, had his time in the UFC. He lost to Tito Ortiz, which is just funny. They did that fight. He's lost to Marco Hoos. Trying to think. Of, uh, he lost to him again back in Pancreas in February 2000 when this, uh, this whole thing started. <laughs> he lost to Simi Chalette. Back in 1990, he's faced a lot of big-time names, but he's unfortunately lost to him. As uh, maybe that will seal his fate here against a debuting in Pride FC, Rashad Evans. Obviously, Rashad Evans. When it, I think it was 2006, he won the Ultimate Fighter. 
want to say it was 2006, 2007, around that time. Because 2005 was the one, the first season of Ultimate Fighter, so obviously him winning season two. It's definitely probably 2006. As, uh, yeah, I mean, Rashad Evans is going to have a significant weight advantage, and he's probably going to win this one. Katsuya Inoue took it on Jorge Masvidal. Game Brad, Jorge Masvidal. Finally, Jorge Masvidal is making his Pride debut. I feel like we've had him sign for a hot-ass minute. Let's see if we can just take a look and see. See if we can see employment history. Yeah, since July of 2005. So he's been with us for almost a year, and he's now finally making his debut. As the Katsuya Inoue has won four of his last five fights by decision. Hoy Masvidal is 21st uh, ranked in the lightweight division in Pride. Katsuya Inoue is 23rd. This is obviously the Pride debut of Masvidal, first time they fought. Forecast set picks have it 4 to 3 on Masvidal having this flight advantage. It's going to be a close one to call, though. Either way, Minoru Suzuki take it on the Brazilian Tiger, Ricardo Arona. Two men who have not won in a long ass time. Ricardo Arona, it's been three years. For Minoru Suzuki, it has been five years. <laughs> Should he, be a, should he be a part of Pride FC? Probably not. I mean, he's 0-4 in Pride. Uh, he lost to Alexander Tsuka, but then again, he hasn't had a bad fight since May of 2000. So at, at, the, at the end of the day, sure, the man keeps on losing, but he keeps on having fantastic fucking fights, so it's kind of hard to throw him. And plus, he's Minoru Suzuki. Obviously, being a wrestling fan, you, you just you gotta have Minoru Suzuki. But Ricardo Rona, on the other hand, I thought for a hot minute, when we started the series... I thought he was going to go on a tear and a half. I mean, he beat Shogun uh, after losing to uh, Yuki Kondo. Uh, you know, he was 5-2 at that point. Even though he really hadn't taken on anybody like big as far as name value, I just thought he was going to go on a tear and a half. And uh, that has not been just complete. I mean, when you see his kind of fight ratings, I can kind of see why he hasn't done so well. Because you see, he's only had one good fight. And it was against Akira Shoji. Everything else has either been abysmal, poor, very poor, average, or decent. Hasn't he hasn't had a great fight, hasn't had anything like that. So it uh, just kind of shows you where Ricardo Rona stands, at least as far as where we're at in Pride FC. Obviously, if he loses this one, which I highly doubt it, that's a uh, adios to him. He'll be sent down the rings, but I just do not not see that happening. As Gabriel Gonzaga, they're going to trade trauma telling men as Gabriel Gonzaga trains at Hammer House, which telling me that's all a record of 0-1 against other cameras of that team. And this is the first time they have fought, obviously, as Gabriel Gonzaga 6-1 to one on Lavera got staff picks as Sean, the lone backer for Trey Dellingman. As Gabriel Gonzaga 4-1, it's 1-0 in Pride FC, beat uh, Alexander Emelianenko over the by rear naked choke at uh, the Critical Countdown show in uh, June of 2005. He's really going to be a problem. I mean, obviously, as I hate to, to say it, as he almost, dist he, <laughs> he almost murdered my uh, favorite MMA fighter, Mirko Krokop, with that disgusting head kick that uh, poor Mirko landed awkwardly and basically broke his leg. And I was surprised he didn't do a lot more damage to his leg than he did, just the way he landed after getting his fucking lights cleaned out by a head kick. That was uh, that was devastating to watch, though. But Trey Drama Tellingman, let's hopefully he can, <laughs> I think, knock him out for me here. As uh, Trey Drama Tellingman. He just beat Jerome Lee Banner. He was on a three-fight losing streak, losing to Fabricio Verdum, Keith Sturdin, and Frank Mir. Th obviously, three very, very talented fuckers. Uh, he's gotten knocked out by Andre Vlaski in 19 seconds. That stuff. Poor Andre Vlaski was killing people. He did, uh, you know, obviously, he got knocked out, too, by Gary Goodrich, too. But, uh, yeah, I mean, he had a tough go of it. He did, he, a lot of his wins were against tomato cans, like Mike Bork and, uh, you know, Jerome Lee Banner, sadly, has, has not done what I've hoped he'd done, obviously being a K-1 fan. He's hoping for a lot more. And then Alexander Tsuka, the, the Diet Butcher, as he's, I think, 4-10. And then and Nobuki Takata, who I don't think had a winning record at all in Pride FC. But uh, yeah, he's 41, so obviously retirement is, is nearing. For a lot of our heavyweights, we have probably a good 6 or 7 that are over 40 years old. We have a old-ass heavyweight division. So that's kind of why I'm happy we're doing this Grand Prix to just kind of weed out some of those older fellas. As Gabriel Gonzaga, Trey Trauma Tellingman, 10-7-1, 4-1, minus 110, plus 110, so it, or plus 100, so still pretty close on the betting lines. Obviously, uh, you know, just the the age gap is significant. Uh, the 10 pounds does Gabriel Gonzaga have on Trey Trauma Tellingman. As a Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, Karate Submission, Fighting, Hammer House, Lions Den. John McCarthy's our referee, our ringside judges. We are underway. As Tellingman looks confident, shortening the range as he looks to strike. Gonzaga looking to, looking very tentative, pokes out a pair of quick jabs, neither had any power on them. Tellingman throws a quick punch but doesn't hit it. 
both fighters step in to strike. Uh, Gonzaga misses the right cross, but leaves him open for the counter. Tellingman attacks with a left jab and a good right hook. Tellingman comes forward, walking down Gonzaga. Gonzaga fires off a counter jab. As he fails to find him his jab, but he lands the big right hand. As Gonzaga comes in looking for the takedown, as Tellingman partially defends it, ends up hopping on one foot while Gonzaga has a hold of the other one. Gonzaga using the ropes to drive him back up against the ropes. Now looking to take him down to the ground. Trip doesn't work though, as Tellingman blocks it and then turns it so that Gonzaga is the one against the ropes. As uh, Tellingman tries to use some dirty boxing, but Gonzaga again using his wrestling to all flying and potential damage. There's a few short punches to the ribs as he's smothering him against the ropes and he scores to the left to the stomach. Some more dirty boxing, but uh, Gonzaga using his wrestling to nullify any potential damage. As again, using that wrestling to prevent any damage, there's a few punches of the ribs, they break him up. As Gonzaga slightly out of range, looking for a chance to dart in and shoot on Tellingman. As he can hit the slip left jab, this is Tellingman, but he hits Gonzaga with a straight right. As Gonzaga moves in and out of range, hoping to attempt his opponent a reckless strike and leave him open for the takedown. There's a punch, but uh, Gonzaga avoids it. Seizing the opportunity, he shoots in. As he gets a hold of a leg, and then Tellingman's left hopping and standing in place, kicking him down on the ground, so he pushes him against the ropes. Now looking for the sharp trip, he does so, and that's a nice inside leg trip. And now Tellingman is forced to full guard, looking to get his leg free. Now he's gained side control to getting his leg free. There's a uh, keeps him guessing a few strikes, trying to sweep from the bottom. He can't do it, trying to get in the mount now. As he's unable to find himself being to get in the mount. As Tellingman tries to sweep, Gonzaga will only succeed in ending up in north-south position now, trying to move back into side control. There's a few right hands, now looking for mount. He does so, now he's got mount, and there he's just trying to ground and prowl. As uh, now he's just turning away, this Trey Tom, uh, Tellingman is trying to get now. Uh, Gonzaga's got his back, he's got both hooks in, looking for the rear naked choke. Tellingman doesn't allow it. Looking for it again, again he stops it. And he's struggling to get free, he just cannot break himself in the hip, and now he's just getting the shit knocked out of him from <laughs> and now he's doing fairly minimal damage out of that and that's he gets survived he survives this trade telling trauma telling men and surviving that first round obviously gabriel gonzaga is just putting in all the work there as he got that one takedown that's pretty much all she wrote for trade telling trauma telling men but we still got a whole nother round maybe he can knock him out or something there's a takedown right out of the gate great sprawl though as uh only in so Telling him trying to get a takedown right out of the gate. Gonzaga sprawls, pushes him down to his hands and knees. And now he's just landing several big shots after the sprawl. Looking for a soccer kick to the head. But Telling him wisely springs back up to his feet and backs off as now he's starting to slow down. Uh, obviously, Gabriel Gonzaga knows he's won this fight. He's just got to make sure he doesn't get finished or anything gets caught in the submission. Both fighters step in to strike. There's a left hook. As Gonzaga scores a massive right hook to the jaw and he knocks him out with that right hook. Gabriel Gonzaga will be a problem in this heavyweight division, just from what I've seen. He's really uh, able to show a lot of skills, just being a... Obviously, his style is mainly Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, but you just saw there, he's been able to knock some motherfuckers out. He can throw the leather and really uh, take a pounding on a lot of those heavyweights. As I uh, gave him thanks, Gary Gonzaga praises his team at Hammer House. He's very, he's very responsive to fans who came and support him. He's then asked who he likes to face next. The answer is like, give it your bell, would be someone he'd like to compete against. As our last prelim fight, it's Minoru Suzuki taking on the Brazilian tagger Ricardo Arona in the middleweight uh, in the middleweight division. Jesus, seven and five. It's Ricardo Arona thirty and twenty two. As Minoru Suzuki thirty seven years old, twenty seven years old. Ten years difference between the two fighters. Five eleven, two hundred five. Five ten, two hundred five. Both no team. Minus seven fifty for Ricardo Arona. Plus five ninety for Minoru Suzuki. Maybe his last ever fight in Pride FC if he does not get his shit together. As uh, Hideki Nagumo is the referee, our ringside judges, round one begins. Suzuki steps in, looking to unleash. There's a tin of left hand from Arona. There's a quick punch, doesn't land. There's a one two punch, but Arona avoids both of them. Seizing that chance, shoots in. As he looks like he's gotten taken down by a single leg. Now he's got a full guard. Now he's just smothering him at this point. There's a few punches. As Suzuki grabs over the leg and seemingly intent on trying to sweep Arona from the bottom of the guard, as Arona defends that sweep. As now he's controlled against the ground. He's just. Yeah, I mean, Ricardo Arona is just going to lay there and just... Suzuki's trying to sweep, but he, I don't think it's going to happen. He's just going to lay on top of him. But luckily, Naguma stands it back up, and again, rinse and repeat. Can't take him down. I mean, this is just going to be all she wrote for Minoru Suzuki. Just rinse and fucking repeat. He's going to try to sweep. He can't do it. There's some small strikes. with Kuei just taking a moment to catch his breath. Block Suzuki as he tries to sweep from half guard. There's a handful of punches. Uh, they, aren't throw, uh, they aren't throwing with any great force. Blocks another sweep, but again, Hideki Nagumo's got to stand it back up. 
as a pair of tentative jabs from Hirona lands, but have zero effect. He's just throwing jabs just to throw him at that point. There's another takedown, and again, he can't stop it. As a Ricardo Arona is in half guard, trying to sweep Arona, but he can't do it. Throws a few strikes with Al Venom. Tries to move from half guard to full guard, but again, Arona doesn't allow it. Arona fires with, away with punches, does little in the way of damage. Blocking Suzuki as he tries to sweep from the guard, and that's the end of the first round. Obviously, all Ricardo Arona as we're going into the... Yeah, I mean, just a shit round that was. Final round again. Suzuki throws a punch. Arona was... Uh, Avoids it. I thought he was equal to it. Arona quickly shoots in. Again, looking for the single leg. He's got it. Just going to waste away the time. Just smothering, smothering, smothering. Oh, my. And there's a hair full of punches there. Lack of progress being made. Stands back up. Does the <laughs> Deku Naguma for like the third time now. Ten of jab lands. A one-two from Suzuki. Fails a land. A ten of jabs. Some more. Just what? And Arona keeps slightly out of range. Looking for a chance to dart in and shoot. Quickly shoots in on Suzuki. Almost stop, uh, stops the takedown, but it's left hopping on one leg. Now looking to push him against the ropes. He's got him trapped there. And that's the end of the round where they just exchange up onto the body and the side of the head. Obviously, if Ricardo Arona is going to win by any decision, what a boring ass fight. An another piss poor effort from Ricardo Arona. It's 8 and 5 now. Minoru Suzuki, 30 and 23, will be sent down the rings afterwards. It's a goddamn shame, but I gave him all the opportunity he <laughs> I could. As Ricardo Roman thanks all of his sponsors for backing him, also thanks his family, friends, and supporters. Says that he has a lot of respect for Minoru Suzuki and his praise and stuff, just he's known how to use these interviews to sell himself. As Katsuya Noe taking on Jorge Masvidal on the main card debut, 7-1, 6-1. As 5 9 161, Jorge Masvidal, 5-11, 161. 21 years old, 26 years old, shooter style, street fighting style of Jorge Masvidal. That man's gonna knock you the fuck out, as Aviani. Combat Club, no team for Roy Masvidal. Minus 180, plus 140. It's going to be a hell of a lightweight fight. Let's see what happens here. Big John McCarthy's a referee. Our judges fight begins. They touch gloves. There's a left jab, but he finds nothing but air on the big right. Can't connect with step strikes and hits a nice straight right hand. Two fighters engage with strikes and nothing uh, seems to land. As uh, Again, Masvidal's looking confident standing-wise and moves in closer. As uh, Now, uh, Noe appeared to be going to try and get in close, but Masvidal took the initiative first. Can't connect with a jab. Lands the right hand, initiates exchange of strikes. There's a pair of jabs from Katsuya Noe. Fails to fire on home the jab, but he lands the big right. As again, he moves in on Noe, preparing to throw. There's a nice jab and a right hand. He just keeps on, keeps the pressure going as Hoi Masvidal. There's a left hand by Noe. Fails four feet and is left vulnerable for attack. He lands the jab, then catches Noe with a low kick to the front leg. As he hits the jab, misses the big right hand. Lands the left jab, misses the vicious right hand. As Noe's backing off with a weak left hand now. Can't connect with the jab. There's a right hand. Comes forward on the attack. Noe tries to hit a jab. Misses. As he can't hit the step. Left jab. And hits Noe the beauty of a straight right. Can't hit the jab. And again, there's a nice straight right hand that lands hard. You can see Noe's getting fucked up by these right hands. But he keeps on going. There's a quick punch. Doesn't hit it though. Comes forward on the attack. And Noe misses the left hand in the exchange. He feints one side. Causing Noe to rack. Leaving some wide open. For an off balance attack. As jab lands from Osvaldov. But... Noe avoids the low kick that's the setup. As he fails to find him with jab, there's a nice straight right hand. There's a left jab, and then there's a roundhouse kick to the body. As he looked like he was angling to take down Tim, but he couldn't take the initiative. There's Katsuya Noe. There's a left jab and a right hand. A few gulps of breath. As, yeah, Masvidal's just really tiring herself out with all these uh, shots. He rolls his shoulders to relax him, moves forward. Steps in a little bit unleashed. There's a jab. Finds nothing but there on the big right. They meet in the center, start to strike, and, and Noe... He uses the left jab, but he can't hit the right cross. There's a, two quick jabs and a nice right hook. And that last shot has done some damage. And no, he's backing off, trying to cover it. He is looking dazed and confused. He's trying to finish the fight with a scorching right hand, but no, he slips it past it at the very last possible second. No, he's circling back to the center. Having gotten the time to regain his wits somewhat. As he can't connect with the jab, there's a crunching right hook. There's a left hand and a right hand. And that has got done a noticeable gash above the eye on Katsuya Noe. That's some two left hands and the fishes just go down. <laughs> Thank God. He knocked him down. And that's a golden opportunity to quickly pounce on the way. Just looking to finish the fight now. As, and please stop the fight, John McCarthy. Oh, my God. What do you saw a man get murdered for eight minutes? Uh, did he even land it? He landed five jabs. But, man, Hoy Masvidal was fucking him up the whole time. Oh, my God. 
Yeah, I mean, he's gonna be a problem. We all know this. Like, we know the state of mixed martial arts in the 2020s. Like, we know who's a top lightweight, and it's Jorge Masvidal. As uh, my god. A problem. An absolute problem. 7-1. Seven 7-2 to seven to is kept here. No way. That's a tough, tough fight to have. As, uh, man, Jorge Masvidal is gonna be a problem. He thanks all of his fights and his fans. So that's what we like to fight next. The answer is he thinks Daisuke Nakamura would be probably a great contest. Yeah, that would be an interesting contest just for Roy Masvidal. Because, again, that's another wrestler. He would just fuck him up the whole time. That's Mazagatsu Funaki taking on Sugar Rashad Evans. Let's see if Mazagatsu Funaki is going to join his Pancrase brethren and uh, just join up with him as uh, in the uh, rings department as Rashad Evans 4-0 from uh, 20, uh, 26 years old, 5'11", 205. Also got Tupanaki, 36 years old, 6 foot 205, 10 years. The age gap, catch wrestling, wrestling. So, again, this is just probably going to be strictly to the map. But again, Rashad Evans, obviously, in this kind of really the mid 2000s was really the change of guys being completely well rounded instead of kind of in the 90s and the mid 90s, in the mid 90s, late 90s, and even the early 2000s uh, was where people really had one style and then they just stuck to that one style. Uh, but Obviously, I, I, the advantage to Rashad Evans with, with age and with his wrestling and Hendo Gracie Jiu-Jitsu as well. Uh, I mean, Mazagatsu Finagi is going to have a hard time with this one. Big job because he's a referee, our judges. Both fighters came in and at the same weight at yesterday's weigh-in, but Evans uh, clearly has a significant weight advantage now. Here we go. They touch gloves. Up close, they start wrestling. Evans looked like he was gotten the better of the clinch. He's trying to push Finaki so his back is up against the ropes. He manages it, and now he's controlling him against the ropes. With Funaki stuck against the ropes, Evans gets the underhooks and looks for a takedown as he sweeps him. Funaki's floored, and Evans has no problem getting side control. There's some right hands and landing several that clearly hurt Mazagatsu Funaki. Now he's turned away from the strikes, giving up his back. Now he's got both hooks in as he's doing, doing a little in the way of actual damage, but there's some big shots now. Funaki's covering up well. Some more shots, but just there's some more clean shots now this time. As he's not doing a great deal of damage again. Now he's just failed to land anything significant. Now he's just nothing's happening. Now he's still got the hooks, despite Funaki trying to break him. Again, just keeps on pounding away with strikes. Just really nothing's happening, though. Yeah, I mean, either... Oh, there, there's a rear naked choke attempt. And that doesn't allow the rear naked choke to be happening. And again, he keeps the hooks in. Some more right hands. Again, for the rear naked choke. And again, Funaki defends himself well. He just... Uh, this is just... Complete domination by Rashad Evans. We saw this coming. As he maintains his hooks again, despite trying to have them broken by Funaki. Pounds away, but Funaki calmly... I mean, that was just pretty much a whole entire... He landed over 100 shots. He was averaging 10 shots per round. I mean, I that's just nuts. That is so much shakes that Nozagatsu Funaki has just landed... Or has just absorbed on him. Final round, obviously we know what's going to happen. Takedown... He's got it. Side control. He's got it. Just he's gonna just keep pounding away, pounding away, pounding away. Blocks him. As he keeps some right hands. Blocks attempt to pull guard. He fires with punches, but again, Finaki deals with him fairly well. He's trying to pull guard. That's not happening. He fires off a handful of punches. Pounds with right hands. Does do anything with the as far as damage goes. Blocks attempt to pull guard. Conley deals with the strikes again. A minute left now. Throws a few weak-looking weak punches. Decides his next move. As uh, Finaki tries to pull guard on Evans, but doesn't get anywhere with the attempt. They stand back up for a second. What a ways to stand up. Obviously, <laughs> Rashad Evans wins this win at 5-0. and Mazagatsu Finaki will be joining his Pancreas brethren in rings. As uh, this rated average, though, at least. So for, that should have definitely been finished. I, I, I'm kind of scared for Rashad Evans. He could not finish him off. After having his back for basically seven minutes, probably, of that entire first round, couldn't finish it off. So, Shot Evans gives a name check. They've run up Hinzo Gracie Jiu Jitsu, all of his various sponsors, and all of his friends, family, supporters. He says that he's very happy to have won his Pride debut and is very happy to be here. As a gracious sensation, Pat Melcher has taken, off, taken on rather George Rush St. Pierre. It's 13 and 2, 28, 9 and 2, minus 4, 450 for George St. Pierre, plus 350 for Pat Miletic. As uh, 2006 was around, I want to say that was pre-George St. Pierre. When I think of George St. Pierre, like, welterweight, like, God champion at the time, I, I still, you know, 2007, 2008, 2006, not really. I was really, like, when Anderson Silva was really coming in the groove, and that was when, the, really, the middleweight title fights were happening. He was just destroying people. Uh, but uh, for, if he, he's probably going to single-handedly beat 
Pat Militich, I, I expect there to not be a problem at all. Probably going to beat him handily, and we'll see what happens afterwards. But I guess uh, we'll, we won't know until it actually happens. Big John McCarthy is a referee. Round one begins as St. Pierre aggressively moves in, wrestling, taking a few shots. That means getting some grappling started. There's a punch, but St. Pierre avoids it. Gets all of them, not having even taken one shot while coming in. Trying to muscle Morgan's throat. He does so. Now he's going to pin. There's a hard stomp on the foot. Wrestles back against St. Pierre, turning him around so that he is now has his back to the ropes. With the ropes trapping St. Pierre, Militich looks for a trip takedown by sweeping the leg. Trip does not work, though. St. Pierre blocked it and then turns to says Militich is the one against the ropes. As St. Pierre has worked in the underhooks and looks to take Militich down. As uh, it doesn't work, though, as Militich defended against it uh, well. As again, he's got him stuck against the ropes. He's looking for the underhooks. He got, and there's a Greco Roman slam. And he can only pull guard. Throws a few strikes. So clearly, just slowing things down so he can catch his breath. Blocks attempted move from half guard to full guard. Throws a few right hands, just trying to catch his breath. Blocks attempt to move from half guard to full guard. Just keeps on sh throwing strikes. Some more strikes. Trying to transition to full guard. That's not happening. Big John Rockley stands it back up. Meltich moves in closer, ready to attack. Tries to go for to the body with a sharp hook, but it's off target. There's a two punch combo, but St. Pierre avoided both of them. Halfway point in the first round, there's another two strikes that does not hit either. St. Pierre moving in fast, clinches as St. Pierre hits him with a knee strike to the body. Push us up against the ropes. He does so. Now he's got the underhooks. Now the slam. Back to where we were. <laughs> Throws a few right hands as he takes him home to plan ahead. There's a few punches just trying to decide his next move. As he blocks Meltich as he tries to get enough separation to scramble. Some more right hands. Some more strikes. Some more small strikes. Keeps him guessing with a few quick strikes. Tries to get the full guard. St. Pierre doesn't get anywhere. Stand back up for the second time. They engage. Meltich misses the big right hand, putting him off balance, allowing uh, St. Pierre to attack with a clean right hand. And that is a big strike. Meltich is staggering backwards into the ropes, covering up. I think he's hurt. And there's a right hook, and that's barely able to stand anymore. The ropes is the only reason he's still look right. Another big right hand catches Meltich flush as he snaps his head back. Jesus Christ. Please jump in there. Thank God. It's, yeah, he's no, there's no way you're going to be able to defend yourself at that point as your winner. By uh, probably TKO. I mean, yeah, G Big Joe McCarthy has been slow on these fucking TKOs. I felt like he was slow the first TKO of the night, and now he's slow here. But my God, George St. Pierre was destroying him up against the ropes. 14 and 2, 28 10 and 2 for uh, Pat Militich, who I believe is lost now. Oh no, he just beat Carlos Newman. But he's. <laughs> well, now only one fight losing streak. George St. Pierre, on the other hand. Uh, he is on a 3-5 win streak after losing to Dennis Hallman at Critical Countdown. He's beaten Jason Von Flew. He's beaten Sean Pearson. He's so going to take on somebody uh, even bigger maybe than Pat Miltich. Maybe. Maybe. We might just see George St. Pierre and Matt Hughes. Just might see it. As uh, George St. Pierre thanks all of his sponsors for backing him and also thanks to all of his family, friends, and supporters. GSP shows their show respect to his opponent and knows that he, uh, and he knows how to use these interviews to sell himself. Is that impressed by your before Matt? Inside the rich Ace Franklin... And Rodrigo Hoos, 13 and 5, 11 and 3, Hoos Valley Tudo, kickboxing, wrestling, about 31 years old, uh, 6 foot 1, 205, 6 foot 185. It's Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, Cincinnati, Ohio. They are a long way from home, and here in fucking Osaka, Japan. Plus 100, minus 110. It's going to be a hell of a fight, because obviously Rich is going to be probably the, have the advantage, I would assume, standing, and then Rodrigo Hoos probably would have the advantage on the ground, so. Usually the wrestler versus striker, usually in WMA 5, usually the wrestler wins out on, uh, 9 times out of 10. Uh, I'd be shocked if Rich Ace Franklin knocks out that kick. So Deke Naguma is the referee, our judges at ringside. Uh, so yeah, I mean, Rich Ace Franklin has 25 pounds on him, so that's going to play into a factor as well. Franklin spins the introductions pacing around like a long-tailed cat in a room full of rocking chairs. <laughs> Alright, says the opening bell. Hoos hits a jab. It has nothing behind it. Uh, Franklin was throws a one-two, but Hoos was equal to it. As uh, Franklin comes forward, looking to force a straight exchange, as Rodrigo uh, manages a counter jab. Franklin misses all the strikes on the combo end with a spin kick. As Rodrigo scores with a weak flick right hand jab, it doesn't trouble his opponent with a combination ending and a low kick to the legs as Rich Ranks Franklin as he lands a right jab and Hoos uh, dodges the big left head kick to follow up. That could have been all she wrote right there. Okay, we're going to see a, uh, some grappling from Hoos, but uh, Franklin was more aggressive, took the initiative. As he doesn't trouble his opponent with a combination thing with a body kick. 
Looked they were able to again see some grappling, but again, Franklin was the more aggressive, took the initiative. He can't find the combinations. He really just can't piece together any strikes, uh, uh, right now at least. It's, they come together and strike, but neither really uh, tentative. It, but it's really tentative, and nothing comes of it. As two fighters engage with strikes, but neither can land a significant shot. They move and they engage. There's a left hook. Soft target with a jab. It has a right hook to the body. Comes forward, and the two fighters start trading blows. There's a counter jab and misses. There's a quick one, too, but doesn't land either blow. Comes forward, walking down. Hoos manages the counter jab. There's a le lands a right jab, but has uh, as Hoos dodges the groundhouse body kick that comes next. As Franklin can't connect with the jab, then lands a low kick to the legs. Hoos gets a hold of Franklin, defends himself for an attempted knee. Hooks for, to uh, sweep the leg in order to execute a sharp trip. He does so. There's a nice inside leg trip, and Hoos is forced to pull guard. Franklin fires off a few punches, but they are thrown without, without any great force. Pounds with less, but fails to land anything significant. As he begins trying to pass the guard, he passes guard, but he can't secure the side control as Hoos starts to scramble for position. As Franklin manages to come out on top of the side control, and side control now begins to work to get the mount. Piles, uh, as he fights the attempt to... to uh, Attempted mount off, and they wind up scrambling for position. Somehow, the scramble leaves Franklin under the north-south position as uh, Rodrigo's on top of him. And now he's moving around, so now he slides into side. Now looking to get mount, as he can't get the mount. Trying to pull guard on Hoos, but he can't uh, get any of the attempt as Rich Franklin. Inside control, just throwing a couple punches, uh, designed to keep him guessing as there's some more punches as he catches his breath. Blocks the temptable guard, he's trying to get the mount. Almost gets it, as then Franklin bucks his hip, starts scrambling, scramble, uh, scrambles to his feet, put, uh, but who's immediately drives up against the ropes. Minute left of the first round, he's smothering him, drops a stomp on the foot. He's going down low, grabbing both legs, looking for the takedown. He does so, he's got side control of it. Pounds away, but, uh, but Franklin deals with the blows fairly easily as he tries to share this to the guard. But that's the end of the first round. I mean, that is a tough one to call. Very, very close. If you're looking at the fight metrics, Rodrigo did land more strikes. But I felt like Rich did a better job on the ground with his ground pass, whereas uh, Rodrigo Hoos has not done that at all. They're both one-on-one -on, -one on takedowns. It's going to come down to the second round. This is going to be a tough, tough one to call if it's another kind of close affair in the second. They come together and strike. Uh, Hoos scores the jab, misses the right hook. Franklin hits, a, hits the right jab, just connects the left roundhouse kick to the body. As uh, Hoos looked, it looked like he was angling for a grapple, but couldn't take the initiative. It's a quick punch, doesn't hit it though. Taking a few gulps of breath, Franklin giving the first hand he starts to tire. Touch it, initiate the exchange strikes. Hoos uh, misses the left hand in exchange. Does some trouble as opponent with a combination thing and a body kick. The two fighters engage with strikes, but neither lands anything worthwhile. Appears to be going to try and get in close, but Franklin took the initiative first. Jab is wide from Franklin, catches uh, Hoos with a left hook. It steps in, uh, steps forward, the uh, strike exchange begins. There's a counter left, doesn't connect it though. Misses all the strikes in the combo, then with a roundhouse kick to the body. A punch from Franklin fails to land. They come together and strike. Hoos misses the big right hand, uh, putting him off balance, allowing Franklin to attack with a good left hook. Stepping forward, his strike exchange begins. There's a counter jab. As he, can As he connects with a nice jab and uh, scores the left cross. Looking very tired now, Franklin clenches to try and buy some recovery time. Now he's just pushing him up against the ropes. He does so now. There's a hard foot stomp. Looking to take him down. Doesn't get the takedown though. Looking for it again, and again doesn't happen. Steps back, apparently not wanting to grapple. He's definitely slowing down his gas tank. is being challenged here. They move and engage. There's a left hand by Hoos. Uses the right jab, but as well off target with a head kick. As uh, there's a burst of strikes, neither fighter can really land a blow. Franklin shows his good guard, absorbing a two-punch flurry. Goes for the roundhouse kick to the body. Finds Hoos far too quick and is on his feet to get caught on this time. And that is your end of your fight. And the end of the second round, I think Rich Franklin won that run. That second round, he stuffed the takedowns, he landed more strikes, I think he won the fight. I'm going to give that one to Rich Ace Franklin to see if the judges agree. We got a draw, we got a Franklin win, and we got a Franklin win. Alright, so we got a majority decision, that's a bit of a rare one. As, uh, yeah, I felt like that was the right decision. The draw was interesting. I would have said if it was still very, very close, but I felt like Ace Franklin did his part, and he gets a huge win. And now he's 12-3. and three. Rodrigo, who's 13 and 6. As he uh, gives an intro to everyone at the pit, his various sponsors, the, all of his friends, family, supporters, he says that he has a lot of respect for Rodrigo Hoos and praises his toughness. Now, our co main event the X Murderer, Vandalie Silva taking on the Vitor, the Phenom, Belfort. What a fucking fight this will be. 18 and 5, 13 and 6. Obviously, both from Brazil. 5'11, 205, 6 foot, 205, 27 years old, 29 years old, more time. Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu Boxing, no team for Vanderlei Silva, shockingly enough. 
Coos Valley 2 0 for Vitor Belfort. Minus 150, plus 110. This is the main event anywhere in the world, but for <laughs> here in the Pride FC, it's a co main event. Because, my God. Yeah, I mean, this is going to be awesome. The referee, Yuji Shimana, is our referee, our judges. As we are underway, start with a touch of gloves. They come forward on the, and they engage. There's a right cross right out of the gate. And there's a powerful straight left hand. And he knocked him out with that one. Oh my god, Vitor Balfour knocks him out in just under 20 seconds. Dear god, Vitor Balfour is a man on a mission. This is TRT Balfour right here. He doesn't give up. I cannot believe Vanderlei Silva, the fall from grace this man has had. He has been knocked out in 40 seconds, 19 seconds. He not, got knocked out by Chuck Liddell. He's lost four straight. At this point, we're going to have to give him a, a bit of a tomato can to beat just to get his confidence back up. Where, you know, have him be at, like, a Brazilian Bushido card and just have him knock out somebody that's maybe even outside even the top 25. Like, like a really, really one-sided fight. Because, I mean, that is just brutal. 20 seconds. I mean, just unbelievable. He praises God. Uh, yeah, you, you gotta praise God after that one. As then thanks all of his sponsors for dedicating, uh, before dating the wind, all of his teammates at Husseli 2. They asked about the finish. Griza's punch power is dangerous weapon as Arsenal and put th that... And he puts that down to natural ability allied with good training. So, yeah, I mean, he's he's a fucking problem and a half now. I was waiting for the time where the flip would be switched to where uh, you could have that moment where he could even have, like, a title fight, and it's coming. It's it's coming. Uh, now, our welterweight title fight. Superman, Dennis Allman, taking on Tetsuji Kato, the champion, 28-6, 25-6. Dennis Allman has had his success against Tetsuji Kato in the past. See if that same success can happen here at the pit, Parista, you know, wrestling jiu-jitsu, shooto style. As a man, this is going to be a tough one. Can Tetsuji Kato, can he lock in that armbar and get the win? We shall see. As Hideki Nagumo is our referee, our ringside judges fight begins. They touch gloves. A tentative jab from Kato lands. There's a jab. Hits home from home and then hits a nice straight right hand. Moving in and out of range as Tetsuji Kato even attempts his opponent into, into a reckless strike, leaving an opening to start grappling. They had some strikes and kicks, but uh, Kato defended them all. And he was ready for it, and he manages to catch the kick, looking for the takedown. Superbly, somehow, Dennis Solomon prevents the takedown, manages to yank his leg free entirely. A three-punch combo fails to trouble Kato. As uh, Tetsuji Kato takes a chance to grab Solomon in the clinch, looking for the trip takedown. Doesn't get it, though. As he's looking for it again, doesn't get it again. Trying to push him against the ropes. He does so, as uh, Kato is, uh, now is stuck to his back to the ropes. There's a knee. To the thigh area, smothering Kato against the ropes and stomps on the foot. As he gets caught with a knee strike to the side of the stomach, this Tetsuji Kato, another knee strike to the side of the stomach. A knee to the ribs now. There's a knee strike just above the hip. As the weights fall him in to throw and to try and throw a knee, he quickly turns him, creating enough space to escape away from the ropes. Punch from Allman fails to land. Seizing that opportunity, Kato clinches. Looks to take him down to the mat. He does so, as Hallman cannot stop that takedown. Kato throws a few weak-looking butts to the size of his next move, peppering home with short, small strikes, making sure to keep it very tight, not to give any room to work with. Holman pulls Kato in close. There's a couple of point, uh, punches to the side of the head. Throws several small strikes at uh, Holman, again, always keeping close by the body contact. Looking for an armbar from the bottom, and he gets it. Wow. As Tetsuji Kato has met his armbar from the bottom match, as Dennis Holman, your new welterweight champion, yeah, that was, a, that was actually a really great fight. Uh, I was very surprised that Tetsuji Kato got the takedown, as it ended up being his demise. As Dennis Allman thanks everyone connected to the pit for helping him prepare for the fight, as various sponsors and supporting him financially. As it went to weight title, strapped around his waist, Dennis Allman celebrates being the new champion. My god, what a fucking car that was. I mean, dear god. Vitor Belfort knocking out Vanderlei Silva in 19 seconds. He had Tetsuji Kato losing by armbar. We have a new welterweight champion. Uh, I mean, just everything that you could uh, want from an exciting fight happened there. We made $6 million. Hell yeah. I mean, what a card. And now, to the Grand Prix. The heavyweight Grand Prix is up next on the schedule. Dear God, it's going to be our biggest card we've ever done. I think it has 16 fights. I, if uh, Yeah, that makes sense. Because obviously 32 divided by 2 is 16. But yeah, I mean, that's going to be an, a, a crazy, crazy fight card that I... I mean, there's going to be so many great fights. It's going to be probably a long episode, obviously, with six, oh, with uh, 
Yeah, I mean, obviously, with 16 fights, we've only had 10 fight cards. Usually, sometimes that even couldn't go an hour sometimes. So, be ready for that. As uh, my god, as then we'll find out who advances in the next round, who's going to be fighting a critical countdown. Absolute, that should be nuts. As, uh, yeah, we got a new champion as well, new welterweight champion, which I don't know if we're going to do uh, him as in uh, Dennis Hallman. I don't think we're going to do, I don't know why I went to middleweight. There we go, Wes. Uh, I'm going to look at the history. As I don't know if we're going to do him and Matt Hughes again. I don't know if we're going to have him take on somebody else. Somebody like a George St. Pierre, maybe, you know, uh, it's really up in the air to really determine what's, what's going to happen next. Because I think we have, just to kind of, so obviously there's the Grand Prix, or metal, the Anderson Silva's going to take on Ron Faircloth in Brazil, Brazilian Bushido 4. I don't know what we're going to do for American Bushido 11. So we might have a welterweight title fight there, uh, you know, with somebody like a Matthews. That could definitely be on the table, uh, I don't think, I think, uh, BJ Penn's still gonna be injured by the time that happens, yeah, yeah, he'll still be out, so it, it'll probably be Matt Hughes taking on Dennis Hallman at that card, then Bushido and Osaka 4, I have no idea what's gonna happen on that card, uh, you know, that's obviously way down the line in September, could be another middleweight fight, could be something else, I'm assuming at, uh, Pride 20, Pride 32 real deal, that's probably going to be the heavyweight title fight. If not, it's going to happen at Shockwave. And then, you see there in January 2007, that's when we're going to start our TV show, Pride FC Worldwide, where we're going to do a TV show. I think we're going to do one every month just to uh, add some flavor to it. Uh, and maybe down the line, you know, by the time we get to 2010, maybe they'll increase by like two to a month or maybe even once a week. You know, I don't Who knows? I, I'm really just kind of playing this all by ear. Once we get to the point where it's 2007 and we're in a whole new year of what, uh, you know, the unknown, you know, Pride FC beyond what happened when they actually closed the doors, it's going to be pretty exciting and interesting. But thank you all for watching, and we will catch you guys next time for a Total Elimination Absolute.